Hello everyone my name is Bahare Atai and I am going to talk about the interaction between traditional and contemporary architecture of educational buildings in UAE and investigate alternative strategies to reduce their energy consumption. Different techniques and strategies will be applied on the selected building. The performance of the building will be evaluated using energy simulation software IES. The aim of this research is to understand and analyze the differences between educational buildings of two different periods in the Emirate of Dubai. After conducting a site visit and purchasing the energy bills of the existing building, the researcher attempts to enhance the current situation of the selected case study by suggesting energy-efficient strategies in terms of energy consumption by using virtual environmental simulation software. In order to provide a comprehensive understanding of the evolution of sustainability aspects of educational buildings in UAE, the research goes through specific steps. Two floor of the British University in Dubai is selected as a study case and annual energy consumption rates will be collected. After that, four selected sustainable strategies will be applied. Then, the selected strategies will be analyzed by IES program using appropriate assessment methods for each strategy. And, a comparison of each strategy is clarified in addition to the overall impact and the best case scenario will be selected. Finally, the energy consumption of the designed building will be compared with the energy consumption of the existing building and the reduction percentages will be calculated. In order to provide a comprehensive understanding, for this purpose, the selected strategies are redesigning the interior layout, adding efficient glazing, adding efficient shading, Adding PV panel to the best case scenario. The oldest type of education in UAE was taking place in tents which were woven from the hair of domesticated sheep and goats. And the teachers or moalims in Arabic language were teaching the students the Holy Quran and Hadith. Later on, Al Ahmadiyya School was founded in 1912 by Sheikh Ahmed bin Dalmak, who died before completing its construction, while his son Sheikh Muhammad bin Ahmed bin Dalmak completed the construction. The school is located in combination area of heritage and trading areas, in Al Ras area, Daira, Dubai. Schooling zone began to take form within the United Arab Emirates as an institutional structure effectively after the foundation of the Emirated Federation with the UAE University which is most important university capstone founded in UAE. From that point forward, the country has advanced with endeavors of ensuring excessive skillability charges, present many unique facilities to cater for both males and females, public and private universities until today. It has been 100 years since this courtyard welcomed the first batch of students who wanted to learn how to read and write. Established in 1912 by Sheikh Ahmed bin Dalmuk. The Ahmadiyya school was constructed in three phases. It all began with the main courtyard, 11 classroom and kitchen. For the additions like upper floor, Burjil came in 1920. Coral, mud brick, dry stone, wood and thatch were the local materials used in this construction. Mangrove wood obtained from East Africa was also used both as strengthening for walls and for roof beams. Ceilings resting on the mangrove beams were made of planks of date palm wood and were sometimes painted. For the purpose of this project, the British University in Dubai is selected as a case study. The university is located in Dubai International Academic City, Dayak, near Al Ruwaya along the Dubai Al Ain Road in the city of Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Dubai has a hot desert climate. Summers in Dubai are extremely hot, windy, and humid, with an average high around 41 degrees Celsius and overnight around 30 degrees Celsius in the hottest month, August. Though, summer season starts from late May until early September. 
The average maximum air temperature is 48 degrees Celsius and the average minimum air temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. The wind that is prevailing in Dubai originates from the course of Kuwait. A northwestern bearing. For the most part, early mornings in Dubai are quiet or with a slight southerly wind blowing seaward. Typically the Dubai winning wind quality is then around 5 to 10 ties. Located on the first and second floor in Block 11 in Dubai International Academic City, the building has an area of about 1,700 square meters for each floor. The design of the floors has a combination of office areas, library, reception, auditorium, meeting rooms, group study rooms, student lounge, and classrooms by which, supports the different activities of the university. Annual DIWA bills of 2019 were obtained from the university and after simulating the proposed layout design in IES software, the energy consumption will be compared with the current energy consumption. In the validation stage, the building was modeled as close as possible to the existing one in term of materials, dimensions, orientation, working hours, number of occupants and thermal properties. After modeling the base case, the energy bills of 2019 was studied and the careful calibration was done between the actual energy consumption and the calculated energy consumption. Overall, the comparison showed an average of 1% difference, which is a satisfying result for the validation stage. The current layout shows a scattered placement of office and classroom. Regrouping the area and link their functions and activities according to occupants' actual usage time will result in turning off the lights and AC in non-necessary hours which can reduce the energy consumption of the university throughout the day. Therefore, new interior layout will be suggested for each floor. The working hours of classrooms and other university facilities like offices are studied and will be considered during the design stage. As mentioned before, the new design is proposed based on the different working hours of the users. Therefore, all the areas which need to operate from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. will move to first floor while all the classrooms and student lounge will move to the second floor. As a result, the university is able to switch off the AC and lighting of almost one whole floor during the hours that there are no classes held in. At the same time, we should bear in mind that the corridor's lighting and air conditioning system should be on during full working hours according to the building codes. After changing the layout and running the simulation in IES, proposed layout showed a satisfying reduction in terms of electric load. The results show an average of 16% reduction on a monthly average. Although existing windows of the building are double glazed, the energy consumption can still be reduced by changing them with, double glazed with argon gas cavity, triple glazed with air cavity, or double glazed with reflective outer pane. Because argon gas is denser than air, adding it to the captive air in double pane windows improves thermal insulation efficiency. Used in conjunction with a special low E, short for low emissivity, glass coating, argon gas windows bring the temperature of the window closer to room temperature. This process ultimately eliminates air currents and drafts that occur when differing temperatures meet. Running the simulation in IES, proposed glazing showed a satisfying reduction in terms of electric load. The results show an average of 16% reduction on a monthly average. A minimum overall unit thickness of 42 mm with two low E coatings, air cavity gas and warm edge spaces used to join the glass panes together. This type of glazing achieves a U value of 1.9, which is much more efficient than double glazing type. Moreover, triple glazing offers a significant reduction in noise pollution which is ideal for educational buildings. Running the simulation in IES, triple glazing showed more reduction in terms of electric load than the double glazed one. The results show 24% reduction on a monthly average.
Reflective glass lets optimal light into the space, but also reduces glare from the sun, which eliminates the need for blinds and other window coverings. And when combined with solar controlling low E coating, this glass will reflect incoming radiant heat energy which will reduce the energy consumption of the building. After running the simulation in IES, double glazed with reflective outer pane showed the best results in comparison with energy reduction percentages of triple glazed and double glazed with argon fill. The results show 30% reduction on a monthly average. Internal shading devices on a building facade is an important passive design strategy as they reduce solar radiation and performs a crucial role to give positive influences towards energy efficiency in buildings. Generally, shading devices are used to protect inner spaces from direct solar gain through openings, windows and large glazed surfaces. The reflective double glazed gave the best results in the previous simulations so the shading devices will be added to the openings with reflective double glazed glasses. The following variables remain constant to make sure that the results are accurate and reliable on all categories, internal loads of the building, orientation of the building, type of glazing. For the first option, basic form of horizontal single panel shading devices was added to the east, west, and south facades of the building in order to reduce the amount of solar heat gain into the building. After running the simulation in IES, proposed shading showed a satisfying reduction in terms of electric load. The results show an average of 35% reduction on a monthly average. And the total annual system electricity reduced from 247.18 MWh to 160.26 MWh. After adding horizontal double panel on south, east and west facades and, vertical single panel shadings on the north facade, simulations showed that the this type of shading is more efficient than the single ones in terms of electric load. The results show an average of 38% reduction on a monthly average. And the total annual system electricity reduced 93.91 megawatt hours. After replacing horizontal double panels with vertical louvers, simulations showed that this type of shading is the most efficient one in comparison to the other two. The results show an average of 40% reduction on a monthly average. And the total annual system electricity reduced from 247.18 MWh to 147.39 MWh. The daylight analysis shows that adding shade structure to the window will not reduce the lux levels within spaces, and still maintain daylight lux level within standards. Meanwhile reduces radiative heat gain and significantly reduces energy consumption due to lower cooling lads. Solar cells or photovoltaic PV are considered as semiconductor elements that transfer the natural lighting into electricity. In order to reduce the energy consumption of the building, 48 panels of 1.9 by 1 meter each, with total area of 91.2 meter square is proposed. The panels are facing south with inclination of 21 degrees, and the power generated by the panels will be as seen in the chart. After testing all the strategies, the optimal case, based on the most energy efficient solutions have, efficient interior layout, double glazed with reflected coating windows as, louver shading elements and the PV panels will be added to rooftop of the building.
In conclusion, vernacular architecture was used in UAE to construct low-energy buildings which were environment-friendly in the past and could minimize the production of carbon emission. The current ranking of UAE in terms of energy consumption is at the lowest. In particular, UAE uses 99% fossil fuels and only 1% renewable energy sources. Reducing the impact of urban development and improving the ecological performance of buildings is the main concern of sustainable building practices in UAE. In this project, the results of the analysis showed reduction in the energy consumption, carbon footprint and created a better environment and sustainable campus. The suggested passive design strategies address the current region climatic environment and illustrate an improved building operation that is ideal for energy performance through cooling load reductions and improving building ambiance, which eventually results in reduction of BUID carbon footprint, creating a better environment and sustainable campus.